Welcome to what we hope will be the first of many Windmill Slam drafts at mtgoacademy.com. I'm nursing a cough that I think I may have picked up at GP London, so please bear with me a tiny bit. Other than that, though, welcome to Kaladesh, the greatest set there ever was, I believe. Um, I think our first pick here is probably going to be Multiform Wonder. I've played with this set a little bit now. Um, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it, but the format is still very much in its infancy, so our picks may not be perfect. Multiform Wonder is rather strong. You don't need a ton of other energy to make it good. And it's colorless. You know, the strongest card in the pack is probably Aerial Responder, but not only is that a white card, it's a double white card. You can't even splash it, whereas almost any deck that we can build, I think pretty much any deck that we can build, is going to be pretty happy to have Multiform Wonder in it. And as such, I think it's a pretty easy first pick. It's also got a high power, high ceiling. If we get a ton of energy, so we end up in a blue-green or perhaps a green-white energy deck... We're already cooking up some serious things in the Multiform Wonder. Following that up, it's a shame to have passed a white guard to pick another one, but I think Visionary Augmenter is very strong. This card always struck me as rather good. Now, there are other options. Thriving Grubs is no joke. Why is my clock at zero? I'm going to reserve Subtle Strike because that card sticks out to me as very good as well, but my pick clock is at zero. I assume this is a bug of some description. And it's rather annoying if it is, so I'd like to know how I'd like to know how much time I have to make my picks and videos, especially if I want to talk through it a little bit. Um, it's either Visionary Augmenter or Subtle Strike coming already past a rather strong card here in white. I think we'll probably just take the Subtle Strike and maybe get out of white's way. Now, black is not a good energy color. Thriving Rats is one of the very few cards that makes energy. You know, Live Fast and Die on both make energy. Uh, wild Distributors are rare, I'm not interested in it. I think I want Subtle Strike here. Okay, our pick lock seems to be back now. now. As much as I like artifacts, Metalwork Colossus is not something I'm overly interested in. Um, as I've commented on before, Blue is not very good in this format at all. But Foundry's Creature is a pretty serviceable card. There was one in the previous pack as well. We're already in black, we already have an artifact. I think this is a pretty reasonable card to pick up it's just a 10 10 right now if the colossus had trample oh god i might be more interested in it, but in a set where you already have a main set mechanic that makes one ones i'm not hugely interested now, there's a lot of red cards left here hijack isn't amazing and i'm not in love with sparkle creativity but spontaneous artists and thriving grubs, grubs are both pretty good we're seeing a lot of white coming around so it might be better to just take this and tackle timing of this fragmentize and bite the bullet um, between those two, I think I would take impeccable timing, but we are accepting then that we're going to have a poor pack two in terms of white. I think it's probably worth it, though. Embral Bruiser is a card I like quite a bit. Um, Bastion Mastodon is a card I like quite a lot as well, but the Bruiser is a 2 minus 3 one. And I find two drops to be a little bit scarce in this set. With that in mind, I might take this Eddie Trailhawk. It's a card I've also not been hugely impressed with, but certainly don't dislike. Malfa Squad isn't bad either, though. Need no, nor zero construct, but out of these, Eddie Trail Hawk is rather good. It also makes more energy for our multiform wonder. As does Live Fast, um, which I haven't been hugely impressed with, but it's certainly not terrible. And I'm not upset about picking up. And then another Hawk is alright as well. And then Prakrata Pillar Bug is not a bad card at all either. This has gone rather smoothly, I think. Got a black white energy artifact something going on you know this and this this and this pay us for having artifacts which we already have some of these make energy which pay off from this and with these also spend energy yeah i'm pretty happy with this i find myself landing in black white a lot what happens tends to happen is people don't take the removal very highly I end up with multiple sub subtle strikes revoke privileges impeccable timings etc and then i just find some creatures along the way to finish up driving mass is perfect in this deck I'm very happy to see that Multiform Wonder. I like Live Fast. It may, it may be one of the cards that as the format goes on, I realize it gets worse and worse and worse, but for now I like it fine. I'm not in love with it, but I like it fine.
Mind roll, I'm not, all, I'm not in on that particularly. A Millennium Inventor has collapsed under the pressure to create a flawless design. That's sad. That implies she just died trying to make a an invention. Can I say this is formatted on Magic Online? It's going to be pretty difficult. This is only two actual abilities and then one sub choice. Oh, sorry, there's three. There's, it feels like there's one, two, three, four, five abilities, but in fact, there's actually only two and then sub abilities within those. Like, you pick which of these two you want when you activate the the card and then when the ability is resolving you pick which of the I don't know actually that's how that works I'm not sure when you pick we'll see well, I'll play that as well it's not a great card but I'll certainly play it it's a 5 out of 5 for in black it's no joke it's hard if you jump it with this hawk Chief of the Foundry is a very strong card in this set. Also, there's not much in this pack for us. But Chief of the Foundry is, I mean, I would take this, maybe. Or the, not, not a second one of those, this, maybe. But Chief of the Foundry is great with our Fabricate cards, and it's great with our Pillar Bug, and it's great with our Wonder, and it's just fine as a 3 mana 2-3. Three. That you can cast for colorless, so that's a strong, strong card, that is. Happy with that. Now we just need the Foundry Inspector to be able to cast this on turn 4 as a 4-4, four, four, and then BOOM! Well, you can't quite cast on turn 4, I guess, can you? Because if you spend turn 3 casting the Inspector, you don't have this in play. Shut up, guys! Um, oh, man. So, straight off the bat, literally no white cards. Um, there's a common missing. Possibly a Renegade Fader. But the card we're taking is probably Rush of Vitality. I've been very impressed with this. Saves the creatures from removal. Gives them... Saves the creatures from removal. Pumps them power so that they can trade up in combat. And gives you life links so you get a nice tempo swing. Very power... It's exactly what I wanted of a combat trick. And it only costs two mana, which is frankly impressive, I think. Now, with Chief of the Foundry, Visionary Augmenter is real. I'm gonna pick that up. Because that now is... Th turn three this, turn four this, you get a two one and two two twos, which is six power and five toughness for four mana spread across three bodies. That's pretty brutal. You do need to be aware though, if you're going to be attacking with the Chief of the Foundry, or even, or even if you're not, I suppose, that it could get um, killed and then sh have your guys shrink during combat. I think I want the Dund operative, we've got some artifacts going now. 2 mana 2-2, two, two, worst case scenario. The plus 1, plus 0. And Death Touch is a little weird, because Death Touch creatures get, shouldn't really need the extra power, but what I think it's doing there is it's making the card better on attacks and on blocks, which is something I'm certainly interested in. I don't think I want Eager Construct. I've been underwhelmed with this. We've already got a bunch of 2-drops now, so we're not really wanting for them. Now, it's a lot better when it's a 3-3. Three, three, and it's a lot better when it's pumping this, getting this... Maybe I do just want the Eager Construct. I was going to take Self-Assembler. And once you get two Self-Assemblers, they're kind of pretty okay together. But Eager Construct is probably just wiser at this point in the game. I'm sure says here, the Metal Spinner's Puzzle Knot, which I'm actually quite happy with. Or Sky Skiff. Um, I think I kind of want Sky Skiff, actually. The Puzzle Knot, its effect is its just a worse version of the effect than Live Fast, which I already wasn't overly excited about. So how... How could I, in good conscience, take it there? That is an incredibly late, tidy conclusion. I was excited to see the pillar bug, but boy, oh boy. <clears throat> tidy conclusion, that late's crazy. Here, we can take another, let me just say at the moment, we can build to last, a metal, metal spirit puzzle knot, or a rush of vitality, or an acrobatic maneuver. Now, acrobatic maneuver is very potent with this, and like, you know, reasonably potent with this, obviously. 
And I guess with this, gives you the energy again. Same with these guys. I guess you can scry again with that. I mean, this might be a good deck for this. I was going to take the Rush of Vitality, but I think this is a little bit more versatile. We already have a single Rush, so... That's a reasonable sideboard card if you find that the stats of a 3-4 match up particularly well against your opponent's deck. I wish you'd taken the Rush now instead of this. But, what are you going to do? So this card makes all of our Fabricate cards go way up. Like, Glint Sleeve Artisan now is rock solid, you know? I mean, it was always rock solid, but now it's like, ooh, get in. Because you know what's better than a 3 mana 2-2 two -two and a 1-1? One -one? It's a 3 mana 2-2 two -two and a 2-2. Two -two. That is a potent play. Now again, you have to cast a Chief on turn 4 to make that actually exist, but having that kind of synergy in the deck is just nice. Chief of Energy also pumps the Sky Skiff when it's animated. But I think I may begin Sky Skiff on the board at the moment. I don't think I really need it. We have a whole pack of stuff to go. And as far as vehicles go, it's very underwhelming. I'd much rather have a Renegade Fighter. Though not today, apparently. Though we do get a Wisp Weaver Angel, which is a card I quite like. Uh, we have a Die Young here as well, but I've actually been a little bit underwhelmed with Die Young. So I think I'm going to take the Angel. Angel's good with all the things I was talking about. It's good with this and this and this. But mostly, it's good because it leaves behind a 6 mana 4 4 flyer, I think. Almost regardless of whatever cute stuff you get to do with it. Prophetic Pioneer. Great card. Flyers are good in the set. And it's rather good with Chief of the Foundry, like I was saying. Chief of the Foundry, because we have no straight zero plus one plus one kind of interactions. I think Chief of the Foundry, or I think all of our um, Fabricate guys are going to be pretty exclusively just making servos. Here I want Diane. I could take Nantwich Patrol, which is good with our flicker effects. It's good with making servos if they're dispensable. But Dai Young at this point is probably worth it. While I've been underwhelmed with it, doesn't mean it's not a good card. And I'm going to be taking it there. Now I think I'll pick up a 9th control, plus this, plus this one's foil. <laughs> um, I didn't want the eager construct there, or the second Rush of Vitality, I don't think. Aviary Mechanic is great. And a card I'm pretty happy to pick up. It's rather good with these, all of our things. It's kind of cute with this. <clears throat> But it's also great with Manthrop Patrol. I'm pretty happy how this deck turned out, honestly. Might just want a second to control over. I honestly say this eager construct. Like it's cute with Chief Defender, but Nathrop Patrol is so good with AVA mechanic and with our servo guys and with Angel and with the maneuver. Enough so that I might just want a second maneuver. Though probably not. I probably don't want. I probably don't want to, honestly. It's better than the Hawk. No, the Hawk's pretty solid, I think. I don't believe I want. I don't think we're a Whirler Maker deck, but the card is really good with this. And upon that, the GP did beat me by just grinding me out with Whirler Maker 2, but. Yet another live fast, though I'm not hugely impressed with the card, if I'm perfectly honest. I'm really struggling as to whether I want that second ninth route patrol over that first Eddie Trail Hawk. Sorry, or the, the second Eddie Trail Hawk. That's a rather tough one. I think I do. I've played Age Trail Talk many times, and Ninth Rift Patrol a couple of times, and I've been impressed with the Ninth Rift Patrol each time, and unimpressed a little bit with the Hawk each time, so maybe this is the time to try it.
pretty good with this, pretty good with these. Sure, this five just seems good, but I don't think this is the deck for it. I think we're pretty straight. Just like looking at a two dollar sale, this seems aggressive to me almost, doesn't it? Like you're probably not playing that here, probably playing that here, maybe. So I'm like gonna spice it out a little bit. And if you push in the fact that we're playing this on turn three sometimes, and these around here. You know, it kind of looks more reasonable. Uh, I think I want nine planes, eight swamps. That's my line agrees. And we're going to see how this goes. It's not a league today. It's a straight up 8 4. So hopefully we um, get some good matches in that are nice and entertaining for you guys. We would love to play first. Thank you very much. And we can keep this hand. Nice curve. This into this. Flick of that into that with that. Boom. And there's lots of anything. Almost any card we draw fits well into that. There's some gaps, we know turn three play, for example, but it's not the end of the world. We have a couple of draw steps to hit one. Like that. Oh, not that. <laughs> the dream here is actually acrobatic maneuver. Actually, it's Chief Defender. Uh oh. Who? Well, we can actually kill that. For now, though, no dice. Long Tusk Club is going to hit me hard and. Set off a train. Great thing about Wispy, great thing about Nanthers Control is means we can really pretty freely block with our servo tokens and let them die. Especially because we know we're going to be getting more. Yep, you got me. Take your energy, you darn filthy ape. Boom, boom. There you go. Next turn we have Tidy Conclusion and gaining two life off of it with servos is up, which is nice. Again, Chief Defender is a great draw. Things like Subtle Strike are great draws. I ain't falling for that one. Counter on it. Put a counter on it. You know you want to. Yes. Good. All in. Mm-hmm. Cool. Put a counter on it. Come on, do it. Yeah, die. Came back to my life. That's fine. Oof, that's potent. It's mighty potent. I'm gonna cast this first, I think. Looks like this is a hell of a turn next turn, with Chief Defender.
The dream is to draw a sheath defender plus acrobatic maneuver. Oh boy. Make even more servos. That would be pretty spicy. Don't play a big dumb bomb. As long as this isn't like a big dumb bomb, we're fine. No, that's fine. Totally fine. These all have two toughness. This is going to be a great. I'll just play this and swing with everything but the Nether Control. Targeting that? Okay. So he kills an active patrol. That's fine. Could always be far worse. Not a bad draw either. <coughs> Boof. <coughs> Back for 14. <coughs> Yep. Take 12. Oof. Live fast to be a good draw here. I want to get refill my hand at this stage of the game, I think. Nice. Clean win there with our servos. Put out a lot of X2s. Wait, I mean, do we have no? Oh, we have one in the deck. I was like, do we have no these in the deck? We have none. We have one. Um, a lot of three twos and things, so club security actually not bad here. Possibly better than. I don't know, this maybe? This 3 4 just shuts down so many things that he plays that I think I might be pretty happy with it in the deck. But that's probably the only change I want to make. I think that kind of sideburn that I just did there is a kind that I don't know nearly enough of. The sort of how do my creature stats match up against my opponent's creature stats. Because there it looked like a 3-4 would shut him down pretty hard. So I thought maybe it made sense to set it in. This is an easy mulligan, unfortunately. Single hand hand is never too nice. This is better, but it's not amazing. We want to keep all lands at the bottom here, probably. Yeah. We're on the draw, so we have certainly have time to recover. And two drop plus... You know, a trick that saves it and gains us life in combat is pretty nice start. Hitting the land off the top was not ideal, though I will admit that. Ow. Oof, woof. Even scrab one to the bottom, man. Come on, help me out. We have lots of ways to regain this time lost now, though. Do I keep an extraordinarily land heavy hand? No, nope, they got the Wild Wilder perhaps? Oof, that's bad. It's a great card. Oh boy. Now, energy means we can't block this. This will be a 4 4, so this is still not enough to trade up for it. Ugh. I think I have to use the rush here. I really think I do. I think I need the life and I need to do something because I'm going to do it in this next turn. Nice. You're a bit late to work, but I'll take it. Server there makes the most sense because it gives this plus power and death touch. You know, this can still block the trade for this. And we have a server left over. I imagine they make little whirring noises like R2D2. Need the gas here. We need a multiform wonder or something to pull us back out of this. And then we need a steady stream of energy after that. So we need like a live fast and a multiform wonder. The ideal set of draws. Live fast and find your creature the fact next turn and multiple window the following turn. That would get us back in the game for sure. <clears throat> I 
Cub. Cub is a little late for you, friend. Oh, great draw. Great draw. Dream here is our opponent attacks with something. We took this in front of it. Our opponent tries to use a trick. We flicker this. We get another serve. We draw a card. It's about as well as this could go. Oh. It's probably turning on this. Right, it's got me. Can't really save it because he just activates it again to kill it, so that's sad. Nice. Don't want that. It's actually okay to attack with this here. I think I'm fine with that. My back on jagged rocks again. Now, if I pump this, he can still use this to take the trade. But if he has harness lightning or something, he can't blow us out like this. If I put the plus one plus one counter on this, for example. If he has the four metal. Oh. Okay. I didn't play around incendiary sabotage, so that might be the death of us here. Yeah, our opponent was sandbagging us. That sucks. That sucks too. Yeah, more reason to have that 3-4 in our deck. That's him so bad in his deck. His deck's rather aggressive, I think. Oh, we just die here, I think, really, don't we? Dick nine right off the bat. And then... Yeah, that's it. That's all she wrote for us that game. Man, oh, man. Yeah, I don't know that we want any changes, I think. 
I got blown out by the sabotage there. Let's keep that in mind. Game three <clears throat> on the play, I think, is the roll for us, and that's probably got to go. Unfortunately, that's one of those hard mulligans. This is, oh my god, I mean, it's probably actually a better version of the hand. We just need lands now. That's a good one, too. I'll keep that on top. But, um, yeah, the five lander removal spell six drop land hand is a, is a rough mulligan. Five hunters, to me, I think I would have something I struggle with is the five hunters actually don't look that bad when you take a glance at them. Because you see a bunch of spells, and you're like, awesome, I got a lot of spells. Problem is, if you draw two lands off the top, your deck just doesn't do anything anymore. Again, it feels weird keeping a non-land from on top, but Dund Operative is, a, is something we can get on the board nice and early. That's rather nice. Great draw, love it. Hopefully our opponent's willing to attempt to trade here. We need to blow them out. Yes, beautiful. Didn't pay. Curious. Attempt to trade, use the rush. Risk the two for one on harness lightning. Didn't happen. Awesome. Hit a land for security, please. Look at that. This is exactly what I was talking about. We're gonna attack your opponents, I assume not going to trade. My mistake. I stand corrected, that's fine by me. And this is just such a big wall now. Boom. Three four is beefy stats. That's better. <laughs> I won't pretend it's not. Good two for us as well, I don't particularly fancy it. We're ahead on life. Didn't attack with the security there because that that play lets this grubs kinda of grow a little bit out of control. Flicker effective enough to have vigilance this turn, which is nice. And growing up patrol. This game's gone rather well for us. You get to impeccably time the thing he equips up here, which is rather nice. The grubs in this case, it seems.
Wonderful blowout. You got it. I ain't blocking, so I'm coming at you. Because I'm on 19, good sir, and you are on 10. Okay. This angel's going to kill you in two hits, buddy. Need to do something pretty special. It's not good enough. Though it does hit pretty hard. Don't think it's gonna get you there. I need some gas though. I'm not hitting it. You are dead next turn though, friend. Unless you can either deal 15 to me or provide an answer for my 4 4 flyer. Angel gets us there. We weren't draw. Oh, that would a great draw. Um, but Angel gets us there and qualifies us for round two, where I hope you'll join me for a little more fun. Round two, and this five liner is a little bit tougher to think about. I think I'm going to keep it on the draw. We got it's two drop, three drop, you know. So it's pretty nice. My only concern is obviously hitting more lands like that. Ooh, great draw, Dennis, like a pro. Never mind, I'm a genius. So obviously the play here is to make a servo because the servo pumps are foundry screech and that one's nice and easy to figure out. Plus that interacts better with our chief of the foundry and all of other cards like that too. Die Young is a great hit here too. We have a ton of energy for it with Thriving Rats and if we had an X one we have an extra energy for our... I guess our rats can't really use an odd number of energy like one but Eddie Trailhawk can. Which is certainly nice. Look at that. What'd I tell you? What'd I tell you? I'm, I'm going to attack here to put the counter on this. If it gets impeccable timing, so be it. Opponent calling it. Maybe they do have a Michael Timing up, so if we subtle strike or something, they're just fine with it. Perhaps they have their own subtle strike up. If they do, they get us pretty good. No, they don't. Or they don't seem to anyway. They're scrying. Phew. Now there's a world where we play the Hawk and Die Young this turn. Absolutely possible. Hawk lets us pump our Thriving Rats through. Die Young will presumably kill something as well. Those all seem reasonable, but our default play is probably going to be Pioneer with Servo. Ooh. Make a big guy. I can kill a big guy. Make a big guy, please. Da 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 da. Yeah, I can just die on that. I still have an energy left for the hawk. Awesome. Soul Strike would be an amazing draw, actually. I like that one too. I could have bluffed, I say, I say bluffed, quote unquote bluffed there, with the rats, but I think there's a chance our opponent would have just traded for the rats, which is not great for us in that scenario. It's not terrible by any stretch, but it's not great. Also, you know, we can flicker the Eddie Trail Hawk. 
draw a card and get more energy for the rats. That's fine. I think I probably will just propeller pioneer though. Use the energy for use the energy to just jump the rats this turn and hit for a big one in the air. That seems pretty good to me. I'm a little afraid of Freeman Gate now, but it is a oof. Look at that. It's beautiful. That definitely makes one propeller pioneer. La 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 servo. La 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 servo. Ba 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 ba. I don't have to turn it. Servo. Da 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 da. Something gonna be impeccably timed. Trade wins. Well, that's just fine. You got it. You gonna play the guy again? Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> He's not an artificer? No, apparently not. You got it. Go three you in the air, flick of this, and make it a three-two. I think. I think that's probably the way to go. Now, I could have theoretically exploded it again and made another server and then acrobatic maneuvers and have it come back. That time was a 3 2, but. Okay, I probably can see it. Um, but I think using the. being a little bit more aggressive is fine there. And using the acrobatic maneuver to save our angel from removal, for example, is more beneficial. Had a bit of a <clears throat> internet problem there, but we're back now. Um, almost timed out on Magic Online, which would have been awfully embarrassing in round three. Wait, or in round two? Round two, my mistake. Yeah, round two, we're a game up. Yeah, I got a little zoned out there, I'm afraid. I can certainly keep this on. This is fine. And I'll put that on top as well. Um, I had like this is a little slow. There's no two drop, but the, the format isn't blazingly quick, and our opponent's deck certainly didn't seem blazingly quick, so we should be fine in that regard. And if he does come out of the gate with a two drop, we can always impeccable timing it. Oh, our opponent isn't too upset about that. Pause we took there. Got back just in the nick of time too. Hopefully my fast play now will serve me well. I'm asking a little sneak peek there. I'm editing the game show over here in this premiere window. Again, with the perfect colors off the right of the bat for our opponent. Aviary mechanic a little late to work. I would have liked to have played that as a straight two drop, but I mean, obviously, it has better utility later in the game. You got it, buddy. Give me a land. No dice. Probably I'm just going to play this now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, no, sorry, I had to be this for life link actually. <laughs> kind of scary if our opponent plays like Cloud Blazer. I played that at the GP actually. I cheaped on that I put Panamonicon in my deck and it served me really well. Well sometimes I had to just get aggroed out. That's pretty good. It's rather good. 
mener vi lytter så tak for for. That's fine. Pioneer, please. Land for the Pioneer. Here it comes. Yep. Nice. That's not nice. That's really bad, actually. Soul Strike's a great draw, mind you, but I would have loved to land for the Pioneer. To just keep really start putting the pressure on. Make it 2 1 and a 1 1. Attack with it. Next turn, or acrobatic maneuver it. Make it a 3 2. Cycle it. And then we're kind of flying. No cloud blazer, 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 no cloud blazer. No cloud blazer. Ooh. I need to tidy conclusion that pretty sharpishly, I believe. Now we can acrobatic maneuver it from under it because like I like I know when we we're drafting, the thing does not travel. So he comes in here, we block with the mechanic, and we just flicker with acrobatic maneuver. And gain and thus gain ten life. Oh my god, where are our lands? We really need to hit that tight conclusion for that thing. God, but then you just cast it again. <laughs> hmm. I actually have to make a 3 2 there because otherwise the doctors just block it. Oh my god. Playing a control deck with a 10 10 in it. <laughs> this is Wincon. And like he's gonna hit us for 10 with it this turn. This is a tough deck to beat. It's a weird deck. Take 10. You got it. Oh, gosh. I'm calling it a day. We're not, we're not beating that. Um, he just sacrifices artifacts. Gets it back into his hand and casts it again, and then we're just not winning that game. Absolutely not. Okay, let's try to be a little more aggressive. Let's pull out Acrobatic Maneuver and pull in another Eddie Trail Hawk. Maybe that's how we push ourselves a little bit more aggressive. And try to get under that ridiculous, ridiculous thing he did that game. Would love to play first. I think it's a necessity, in fact. And good hand. Fine. Totally happy with this. This is fine. Can make a bunch of energy with this now with the mechanic. That's nice. I would love a three drop so that we can go boom, boom on turn four, but. You have time to draw one. Two hits exactly. Better two drop there. Much more aggressive one. Need an artifact now. Ideally, a pillar bug or a chief of the foundry or something like that. Panharmonic on it to our opponent's hand. That's kind of scary. Need to get moving. You're very good. But you're a little late, I'm afraid. Though you do hit very hard. If we can get that flyer out of the way, 
You smack for five. No, it's not against the Valkyries, you don't. I think I actually just want to kill that, honestly. It's going to prevent so much damage, that I, and I have to win by bashing through. I think I really do just want to kill this. Then make a menace guy next turn. Now, but the issue is here, it's rough for our opponent to take a turn off for Panamonicon. Like, really rough. Especially if we draw that. He's doing it. Give me a land. Look at that. Boom. It's basically an ideal draw, which is not great for us. <laughs> I did a great job of clearing things out, didn't it? More energy. Now you need to make a flying blocker, buddy. Or you're in bad shape. Now you do have Warlord Maker to do that. But you have to spend a lot of mana to do that. You need to basically give up your turn. I suppose he has the block, he has the experimenter, the experimenter himself. The flying blocker. <clears throat> but if he goes all in on that and we draw removal for it, he's in bad shape. Die Young works here as well because you already have energy in reserve. Aether Theorist is fine. Can't make a Thopter anymore. Can select for inspection, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Ninth Raider Troll is a good draw there. I would be playing it. No need to jump this this turn, really. Doesn't make much of a difference. Oh. I smell a select for inspection here. Oh, no, just a jump. That's cool. And the push there, that's fine. Okay, could have given that lifelink, but I don't, don't know that it matters, really. Select for inspection. Oh? Yeah, it's a trade wins. All right. It's okay. Oh, it's not. God, he plays that thing again. Oh, and he makes so many more Thopters. Christ. Okay. Where does make obsolete when you need it, huh? Yeah, go. He's on six. Come on. Our bonus deck is sweet, but it's very frustrating. And I mean, if I lose to it, I'll be happy to lose to it. And I'll still post a video because of how sweet it is. It's good to see these kind of decks in action, especially early in the format, so you can know to expect that if it comes up. 
No, his deck does kind of hinge on rares. The Colossus and the Pantomonicon specifically. Good God. Uh, make obsolete would be so unbelievable here. Oof, you're no good. As in, you're, not, you're just not as good as this. Fine, it grows this. Now we're putting a good bit of pressure on our opponent. I wonder. Or that wonder rather, that multiform wonder is a real pain. But a simple metal or colossus is bad news, and a simple prophetic prism is not great news, it's just a divination for you know, two mana draw to. It's rather good. I had a deck like this, a lot like this, the GP, where I built a normal white green deck, and I was like, hang on a minute. And I had a pan of in my pool, and I was like, hang on a minute. Everything in my deck triggers this. Surely there comes a time when it's just worth it, and surely that time is now. There's the Colossus. There's another theorist. Me, oh my. Quiddlebug's an okay draw, I guess. I think I'd rather just play this. And make the servo. And jump that with the energy. Yeah. Throw the server in front of this, can make this bigger. Yep. Yep. I'd rather look at this life link. Need another hawk now because this is not bashing through this stuff anytime soon. Though the patrol continues to grow, which is nice. Very nice. And our life's pretty stable. I mean, the only issue is our opponent gets so much more value out of his or her cards and they have enough to build in the form of the world record. But, like, if they play a cloud blazer, I think I just can see it. And I have to imagine that's what the splash here is, right? Oh my god, the prisms. <laughs> and something that would happen to me with the Panharmonicon deck is I would deck myself. The deck also had a key to the city in it. And I would actually just deck myself, eventually. I'm not certain that's a concern for our opponent, really, necessarily, but it's something to keep in mind. Oh, God. <laughs> Good Lord. I don't remember what fell. That's annoying. Good Lord. I don't, oh, yeah, I don't know if I can do that. God. I can flicker it again. Wait, can't you flicker it again? Oh, no, he can't. He can't target it twice. That doesn't, yeah, of course. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna call it a day on this one, I think, guys. We got crushed by a super super sweet deck and i'm honestly i'm happy to have that guy in the finals in my stead his deck was awesome thank you for joining me calder seems like a set where we can you can draft these kinds of silly insane things and panamonicon i think is a real cornerstone for that kind of deck so i'm really happy to see that it works because i made it work a little bit before in a pre-release online and i made it work a little bit in the gpa you know i went four four drops so not amazingly well but well and I'm happy to see that that survives in draft. Thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all next time. And Godspeed, Garrow 10, with your Panther Monicon deck into the finals.